cisterns. So these are bigger, that's all. They're just bigger. Um, again, ah, here we go. So this is um, sanfranciscowater.org. They have a lot of information on um, cisterns and rainwater harvesting. The reason is uh, San Francisco is set up differently than many municipalities. Does anybody know why? Think about their utilities. Water, electricity, storm. Earthquake. Well, yeah, you know. It's actually that the storm and sewer are all in one pipe. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So if you have a really big storm, you're trying to get sewage out these pipes that are trying to handle all the storm water. So if they can get people to hold on to this water, even for a day, it makes a big difference. So we don't require that storm system to really be big enough to handle all of that. So they really push that. So sanfranciscowater.org, there's a nice um, little brochure on that. But you can see, um, so gutters, you have to have gutters. You have to have some kind of downspout or something. You can add leaf screens so that you don't get that leaf debris, especially if it's a second story house. That's really hard. You might want a leaf screen. There's something called a first, first flush diverter, which I will talk about. Um, backflow prevention device. Why am I talking about that here? Okay, this is for an overflow. I don't remember that one, sorry. And then some kind of spigot and hose bib, or it can be set up to an irrigation system. It can have a pump in it, or it can just use the, the pressure. In this system, where you have quite a bit of um, head pressure, and it's a slope, um, you may not even need a pump. You could just use um, a hose or something. Okay, so we're very interested. Now this applies to rain barrels too, okay? But we're very interested in keeping that water clean. It's not gonna smell when you open it, so it really matters what the roof materials are, um, the leaves and debris that are on your roof. Um, we don't want any algae, so anything that allows light in would not be a good cistern, okay? They need to be opaque. Opaque? Opaque. Um, and dust and bird droppings. You know how dusty it is here. It's, we get a lot of just stuff blowing in the air. And birds go on your roof, and they have a whole summer to be doing their business on your roof. And you may not want that going into your um, cistern. Okay, so. Uh, roof materials, that's really the first thing to think about. Um, slate is great, but how many slate roofs do you see? But they do have some fake slate, I believe. Um, steel, not very popular, but it's starting to get a little bit more popular in the Bay Area. Um, clay or concrete tile, certainly there's a lot of clay. I actually put um, a concrete tile. and. These, especially steel, it's not absorbing anything. With the tiles, they are gonna absorb a little, a little bit, so you will get a little bit of loss. Okay, now, composites. These are made from petroleum. So, you have to really think, and it's totally up to you, do I want to use that water from my cistern that comes off my um, ask, you know, my composite roof, composition, yeah, whether I want to use that for my vegetable beds. That's your decision, but I would exercise some caution, okay? And if you're thinking about roofing, these are some good things to know. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Slick. I don't know. I 
And is it, so she has a flat roof and she's asking, would that be an issue? I don't know. I've never. I'm just putting it out there for people. Oh, so, so you think it's safe. You did a lot of research. Great. Non-toxic. Did you look at the material safety data sheet? Okay, great, perfect. And so the name of that product again is? Metacrylic. Metacrylic. The silicon crushed rock. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So that's another option. I will update that. So if you have a flat roof, an Eichler or something like that, look and you're going to re-roof, look for a product like this. You, if you know what is on your roof, um, like if it's another flat roof, you can always look up the manufacturer if you know it and look at the material safety data sheet. Every product is supposed to have a material safety data sheet. You may have to call them. Sometimes they're on the web. They're not always willing to put it out, but it's a really good thing to know. Okay? All right. Um, wood shake have fire retardants, and that's also a concern. They definitely wash off. Okay? And you lose fire retardants over time as it leaches out of of the roof. So again, that's something to be concerned about. Yes? Um, you can actually at least use the water to flush your toilets. You know? Oh, flush your toilets. You can use it on ornamentals. I'm just saying vegetables. Excuse me? Uh, certainly for drinking water. So again, that comes back to the rain barrels too used as emergency. So I had a client, he had three rain barrels. He had um, a house that had a composite roof and a workshop that had a steel roof with some pretty nice big um, downspouts on the work shed. It's like all these rainwater barrels need to be moved to the workshop because it's metal and it's much better. Yeah. It's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. Great. So he has tomato plants, but he has a composite roof, and he tries to get the water from the. Is it in a cistern or? Uh, straight from the downspout, and then it goes to the bottom of the tomato plant, which he feels the roots aren't quite getting to that. So it's totally, I just want to make you aware of it. The other thing to worry about is lead flashings and lead solder. So after all of this, of picking out a lightweight concrete tile, excuse me, my roofers were out, and I saw all the flashings, and I said, what are those? That looks like lead. And they said, oh yeah, they're lead. I'm like, no, no, we're not, we're not using lead. You're changing that all to steel. They like lead because it's very soft, and so it really um, is easy to mold around um, your outlets and things. Uh, you'll tell me what those are. Um, but you can still use vents, thank you, roof vents, but you can still use steel and they may have to caulk and things like that. So, um, and this house in Palo Alto, the same thing. Um, we picked out a section of the roof. They had a perfectly fine, I don't remember what it was, perfectly fine roofing material, but I asked them to check the um, flashings and we had to change a few of the flashings. Okay, all right. Oh. Yes, the one thing I didn't bring is my little leaf screen. Um, they have some screens like this. Um, I didn't bring it. Um, so the downspout comes down, and then you have this angled piece, so the water goes through, but if there's any leaves or materials, it's a very fine mesh, and they just kind of roll off. So there's that. Um, gutter glove is pretty well known. Um, for a screen, but there's lots of different products. 
Um, these are rain tubes that again, the water can go in, but not necessarily the leaves, okay? All right. There's also something called a first flush, because again, we said birds do their thing. I mean, I found some pretty wild things on top of my roof um, that I don't necessarily want going into my rain barrel. So there's something called a first flush. Um, they recommend removing at least 10 gallons per 1,000 feet. And the way this works is um, you have this pipe. The length of the pipe is sized to the size of the roof. So if you had um, 1,000 square feet, this would need to be 10 feet, right? And at the bottom of it, and it should be a little farther out, but at the bottom of it is maybe a little um, um, emitter, like an irrigation emitter. And then um, you can put a quarter inch tubing, because this is too close to the house. But it just kind of drips really slowly out. So the idea is the water collects, comes down this vent, this tube fills up. Once it fills up, there's this little ball that floats in there. And then the water then starts to go to the tank. So you get that first flush. Now this happens every rain event, okay? Yeah, all right? Okay, mosquitoes, you'd have to have screens on all tank intakes, uh, secure the barrels. If they're wider than they are tall, it's a little bit better and you have less of an issue with um, screening. Um, secure the lids, they all need to be child proof, and there needs to be some kind of an overflow that's directed away from the house and to a pervious area, okay? So this is one, my client had some, I didn't put these in, she had some, and I think this is 5,000 gallons. And her husband likes to take pictures, so she had somebody paint this picture on there. And by the way, 5,000, is about, I mean, that's a pretty big rain barrel, but it's about, yeah, 5,000 gallons, but it's about the max that you wanna think about because anything over 5,000, then the concrete slab that it's sitting on needs to be engineered, okay? So 5,000, below 5,000 is good. And then here's just a little setup. Um, they just had it um, that used a hose and then they added a pump and things like that to it. So here are some other um, rainwater tanks. This is actually a picture of Urban Farmer. Um, Bushman is an Australian company. Uh, they're very big in rain tanks and Urban Farmer gets most of their tanks from Bushman. And they have everything there. Uh, Scotts Valley Plumbing also has some. Now you can get really big ones. Here is one, so this is tanks below ground, which you can do, they tend to be quite a bit, maybe four times as expensive as the ones above ground, because um, they, you know, they need to take a lot of different pressures. But this is a tiny little Palo Alto house, um, and I think it's a 2,000 gallon Xerxes tank uh, that we put in. It was very tight between the garage and the house. And I was worried about turning and all of this. Here's the pit that it went into. And um, one thing about uh, Palo Alto, could be other municipalities, is sometimes you have high groundwater tables. So you have to be careful about that. Um, in this case, Sometimes you have to have a um, geoengineering survey done. In this case, uh, I went into the city. There had been enough of their neighbors that had done them that we could feel pretty comfortable that this thing wasn't going to start floating um, in the middle of winter because it was collecting all this water. So here it is going in. And I was talking about to somebody that there's always a manhole, an access in because at some point in time you may need to, not you, a specially trained professional will need to get in there and kind of clean it out. So it's always important to mark 
and note where that, where that manhole is because it will be under a couple of feet of soil. You can see the, oh, dang it, uh, kind of the input and the output there. The pump, I think, went down there. Um, yeah, pretty fun project. Um, yeah, and so it went into, this is pea gravel, and you can see this is some kind of filter fabric, and um, that lets moisture go out into the soil, but keeps the gravel, the pea gravel and the soil separate. What's the material of the pea uh, I think it's polypropylene. It doesn't say. You can look on the Xerces site and find out. They're a big uh, company in underground tanks. Okay, and the, okay. Now, Diana, this is what you were asking about, and this is on the SanFranciscoWater.org website. But you can see how they have them kind of all strung together. And um, I'm sure the downspout is here, because I don't see it over there. And there's the little overflow. So you can look for this publication. Uh, there's also a way that if the tank is um, quite far from the downspout, you can do what's called a, um, it's called a wet conveyance. Um, and so what happens here is you have the downspout. This is a tight line. This is a tight line. And once, um, as long as the gutter is higher than the intake, the pressure of the water will push it in. So you do have some ability to keep it, you know, not right next to your house. Okay, and I think I have, oops. Oh, I must have hid that one. Okay. Um, here are some, again, in a Palo Alto house. These are some slim lines that um, Bushman creates. That there's like literally five feet of space here. Um, but it was a great way. This is a back fence and an office building, a separate, like a detached office. Um, so I think they put four in. Oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, man, I think there's four. And I don't remember how big they are. Um, this is kind of the connection. Again, you see that leaf filter, and it's going into this one. And then this is where it goes out to the garden. There is an external uh, pump. Uh, 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 uh. Um, for this one, we were doing ornamentals. I know you can't read this, um, but you can see here's the house, front door, garage, and then here's this detached building, and the, the um, tanks are back here. Um, a great thing to do is to pick one. Th th she already had installed irrigation, so we were able to take one zone and use that, um, water that with all the water from the tanks. There's always a um, hose bib. Oh, there yeah. There it is, right there. So yeah. You probably part? would. I don't know. You could always, I mean, if you were worried, you could always add a second. Yeah. OK. Get permission first. 15 cents a gallon through Palo Alto Public Works, maximum of 1,000 and 50 cents per gallon through Valley Water, which is Santa Clara Valley Water District, up to $1,000. <gasps> oh my God, we're early. We're never early. So here are some resources. Uh, I showed this one first, slow it, spread it, sink it. That's online, soak it up. That's the Skaverp one that I passed around. Um, I have one of these books. Oh, no, this is different. This is Design for Water. This is a good one. And this one's by Art Ludwig. He's big in gray water, 
but he also does um, rainwater harvesting. So there's that. Okay, um, okay. Any other questions? Arr. Any other questions on cisterns? We talk. Um, I, I did talk about using non, uh, the quarter inch tubing and using, a, I mean, you can turn that on and turn that off. You can also hook it up to an urban farmer um, valve that's connected to your controller. Uh, those are about the only ways. And then if you want more pressure, then you'd need to use a pump. Anybody else? I put you guys asleep during the cisterns. Um, so I have a 70 gallon cistern. Uh huh. Up above some of the I just pulled the excavator, so it's supposed to be that 70 gallon thing. And um, the price of the tank itself is the same. Yeah. It's much less than the tubing. Yeah. The tubing cost is almost double. Yeah. Where'd you get it from? Uh, the shipping cost, he said, the price of the cistern was much less than the shipping cost. And my question is, where did you get it from? So what I did is they have this uh, website, it's called Team Farmer. It's in Florida. He, oh. A special discount that they ship in free shipping. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, good. Free shipping is good. Yeah. So he's just saying, watch out for that when you order, when you order it. Yeah. Yes. Diana. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of where I got mine. Yeah, they were definitely doing that for a while. And, oh, I'm sorry. Her, she was saying that on Craigslist, thank you, on Craigslist, you can often find people selling barrels pretty cheaply that had been shipped with food in them, like olives. I think mine was an olive barrel at one time. Yep. Thank you, Diana. Anything else? We good? Anything on rain? But yes. No. No, not at all. In fact, it's a good. It's a very good surface. Glass is very good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant her behind. But then we'll get to you. Um, and speaking of permitting, um, rain barrels do not require permitting. Some cities do require permitting. I think most cities require permitting for cisterns, I believe. Am I right on that, Kevin? Pam, you can address that when you come up and do your talk, which will be soon. Okay, anything else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you. <laughs> yeah. Not for potable use. I, I, I wouldn't. No, no. But, but yeah, I would say ornamentals would be fine. Okay. Yeah, perfectly fine. Uh, oh, tar and gravel roof. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I'm not good at this repeating questions. Anything else? Rain gardens, pervious paving, cisterns. We're good. We're ready for Pam? All right. Let's see what I have. Yep, so rebates are coming next, then class surveys, and then giveaways. Thank you. Thank you.